Hey everybody, welcome to the Mana Leak. I'm John as always, and today we've got a product unboxing, opening, whatever you want to call it. It's this nondescript white box, but inside this nondescript white box is Magic the Gathering from the Vault Angels. From the Vault, for those who don't know, is an annual product put out by Wizards of the Coast. They take 15, usually, except for one time, uh, cards based on a theme. In this case, angels. We've previously had dragons and uh, band and restricted cards and uh, legends and things like that. Uh, lands, destruction spells. This year, we get from the Vault Angels. It's a very limited run product. Uh, most stores get five or ten copies of this. It's MSRP is, I believe, $40. Uh, it currently is retailing on Star City for 80 and is out of stock. So uh, these go fast. So yeah, I'll just talk about what From the Vault is as we unbox this. You get this, this box, and the boxes are actually rather nice. They open up, uh, and they'll show you, you know, kind of the three... Uh, face cards. Generally a nice box. It's really well constructed. I've used them as deck boxes and things like that before. The other nice thing they have is uh, they're not taped shut. They're not glued shut anywhere. They're actually magnetically sealed. Uh, this little flap here has a couple of magnets in it and it just magnetically seals. Makes for a really, really nice box. It's one of my favorite parts of the From the Vault series. But if you open it up, there's a little uh, drawer that you slide out, and that's going to have all the stuff in it, so we can set the box aside. Inside, you'll see the three cards again, and a die. Every From the Vault comes with a die. In addition, bottom of the box, you get yourself a fold-out poster, which I'm sure will not be able to remotely fit in frame. Um, but on one side, we have... Yeah, you guys can't see that at all. But it's a poster of Teriel the Reckoner. I think his name's Teriel. We'll find out. He's in the set. On the other side, you get an explanation of the product and kind of the cards in the set. Why they're included, why they're famous, etc. Uh, but we'll go through each of the cards ourselves. Pulling that off. Again, I love that there's no tape. There's no seal. There's no nothing. It's a really well put together product. Uh, it's clearly a a well-crafted, limited-run kind of thing. The dies are always nice. Um, they're usually some sort of pattern or some sort of texture that you don't usually see. This one's a really sort of, not opalescent, but uh, it looks like soap, I guess is the best thing. It looks like something you'd throw in your dishwasher, some sort of dishwasher tablet. Uh, but it's got the, uh, the set symbol there for the 20, and just a really nice spin-down die. My favorite is the From the Vault 20 uh, die because it has a 20 on the 20 because that was the set symbol. Um, but yeah, nice spin-down die. I don't use spin-down dies in games, but I do like collecting them. I do like having them. My favorite is still the uh, uh, the Ojitai one from Dragons of Tarkir. Really nice sort of see-through translucent die, but happy to have another From the Vault die. So each package contains five cards, and each card is foil. And the foil is a different foiling process than what you normally see in, you know, just booster packs. Uh, in booster packs, the foiling, uh, how do I best describe it? It's, uh, it highlights aspects of the card. So, for example, I believe the pack foil of Abyssin Angel of Hope, uh, her breastplate would be foiled and the the light parts would be foiled, basically. What should be shiny or bright is foiled, and what is dark wouldn't be. So her boots would not be foiled. Her uh, loincloth-looking thing there would not be foiled. From the Vault sort of foils the entire card. Uh, it looks like that's being picked up pretty well on the camera, actually. Uh, the entire card gets foiled. There's still highlights to it. Um, so, you know, uh, the background is still significantly more shiny than... Uh, the black parts of the card, but it gets this sort of overall foil. It's very similar to uh, uh, foil baseball cards and things from the 90s, uh, you know, uh, top deck and uh, score and all those cards. Uh, it's very similar to that. The downside is they warp pretty bad, so I just opened this package. This package was right out of the box, 
Not sure if you can see that, but there's already some warping happening. You want to throw these under a very heavy book. You want to throw these uh, in, you know, a, a perfect fit sleeve and then a dragon shield sleeve. Throw them in a book for a month to get rid of that warping and uh, keep them very, very flat because they do warp like crazy. But up first, we've got Avacyn, Angel of Hope, uh, the first incarnation of Avacyn from Avacyn Restored, a huge commander card. I don't think it's played much else. You know, it is a five white, white, white angel, but it's a huge commander card. Flying, vigilant, indestructible. Other permanents you control have indestructible. Not other creatures, other permanents. It, oh, it's a beating when it comes down. Um, takes a while to get there, but when it comes down, boy, is it pretty good. Huge commander playable card. Um, next up, we've got Entreat the Angels, another Avacyn Restored card. This being Angels, you can imagine Avacyn Restored was a, a big draw for the Angels. But we've got Entreat the Angels, which is uh, XX White White White. And you get to put X44 four, four White Angel creatures, creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. But it's got Miracle, which was one of the Avacyn Restored mechanics. So it's a bit of a weird mechanic, but if you draw this card off the top, before you put it into your hand, you can reveal it and pay the miracle cost, cast it instead. So if you top deck it and you have the mana available, you can pay white, white X instead of white, white, white XX. So it becomes significantly cheaper and rather game ending most of the times if this was top decked, you know, turn seven or eight. It hurt like crazy to top deck this, you know, turn one, turn two, turn three, and you just wouldn't reveal it. And then you'd have to wait to have all the mana to cast it. But fun card, uh, more of a cube card more than anything. Commander for sure. Again, I don't see many other places that play it other than that. Next up, we have Exalted Angel. This was the first promo art for From the Vault Angels. Four white white for a creature. Angel, of course. It's a 4-5 with flying. And whenever Exalted Angel deals damage, you gain that much life. So it's got lifelink before lifelink was a thing. Back when it was a triggered ability. The kind of cool thing with this is if this creature gets lifelink somehow, let's say you put a... Uh, 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 you put Hopeful Eidolon onto this, it would actually do double lifelink because it would get the life for lifelink and it would get the life for this triggered ability. Kind of a cool artifact left over from uh, old magic before that was a keyword. It's also got Morph. We all know Morph. Morph is uh, pretty recent these days, originally from the Onslaught block, I want to say. Uh, but her Morph cost is two white white, so you can flip her up uh, on turn four, actually. Uh, which would be a real beating to get a 4-5 or five flyer lifelink. Uh, again, uh, I'm not super familiar with this card. I don't think it's his play. Again, um, Commander, of course, for sure. Cube, probably. Uh, probably not much else, but still, decent card. I should also say most of these cards are going to end up in my cube, um, which I will do a video for for you guys someday. Um, but most of these cards will end up in my cube. I like having them because they're, you know, they're so special. They're from the vault. Um, and they're also just usually pretty good cards. Uh, as well, of course, Angels is possibly the most collected tribe in Magic, uh, rivaling just dragons, I would say. So I imagine this set's going to appreciate and value pretty well. Next up, we've got our first non-white angel, Iridescent Angel, five white blue for a 4-4 flyer with protection from all colors. Protection from all colors. You're going to have to kill this thing with a colorless spell or, uh, you know, anything else that would get around protection. But yeah, Iridescent Angel. Again, a card I'm not really familiar with. I'm not sure what set it's from originally. Uh, don't know if it'll end up in cube. That's a really expensive cost. Really, really expensive cost. But a uh, cool card nonetheless. Finally, for this pack, we've got something I got to read. Janara, Asura of War. Uh, it costs, I want to say that's Bant. Green, white, blue. For a legendary creature angel, for a 3-3 flyer, you can pay one and a white and put a plus one, plus one counter on Janara, Asura of War. Uh, so for two mana, which is really cheap, you can make this a 4-4, four, four, and then a 5-5, five, five, and then a 6-6, six, six, and then a 7-7. Seven, seven. If you've got doubling season out, you could... You know, make this pretty big pretty fast. Uh, seems like a fun card. My cube doesn't really do triple color stuff. Um, it's much more of a two color cube. So I don't think this will make it into my cube. 
but I see definite commander playability with this uh, if you have a Bant commander, of course. Um, I hope that's Bant. I don't know my shards that well. Uh -huh, but yeah, cool card there. So let's open up the Acroma pack, or Acroma number one. There are two Acromas in this set. If I can get the thingy to open, there we go. Uh, as well, if you guys aren't familiar, these cards are not randomized. These cards are the same in every single box. Uh, so if you get your hands on this, you're getting the exact same cards. Uh, Acroma Angel of Wrath. Five, white, white, white for a 6-6 six, six flyer. First strike, vigilance, trample, haste, protection from black and from red. That's a lot. That is a lot. Um, we've had her in Momir the past few weeks, uh, at least once, if not a couple times. Really, really, really solid card. Really, really expensive to get out, unfortunately. Um, I'd really like to find a place in my cube for a chroma, uh, the white chroma, maybe the red chroma as well, probably more likely the red chroma, which we'll see at some point. Um, the issue, of course, with me suddenly having a, a huge influx of these giant angels is I don't have a ton of five white, white, white spots in my cube. And so it's going to kind of be, do I want a Chroma or do I want Avacyn? I don't know if I can support both. I'm going to try. I'm going to try because a Chroma is so iconic. But uh, we'll see how my cube goes. But that's a Chroma number one, Angel of Wrath. Here's a Chroma Angel of Fury, a Chroma number two. So a Chroma was always a white angel. But then we had Plane Shift where we saw sort of alternate realities and... Uh, colors got shifted there was a white counter spell and there was a uh, a white burn spell and a chroma went from being white to being red and she was a five red 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 six six flying creature she couldn't be countered she had trample she had protection from white and from blue she also had fire breathing and she was a morph creature so you could pay three morph her down and then pay three red 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 to on morph her uh, very good version. This one's a little bit more likely to make my cube, firstly because there's not a lot in red at this high of a casting cost, and because she has morph. And I would like to add, you know, a smattering of morph creatures. I think I have like one, and so if somebody morphs something, you know what it is. So I would like to have a few different morph options. So there is that that kind of question of what could that morph be on my opponent's battlefield. So I see Angel of Fury definitely making my cube not sure about Angel of Wrath. And of course, every card we've seen so far, except maybe Iridescent Angel, is super commander playable. Next up, we've got Archangel of Strife. Archangel of Strife is a 5 white, 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 6-6 six, six flyer. As Archangel of Strife enters the battlefield, each player chooses war or peace. Creatures controlled by players who chose war... Get plus three, plus O. Oh. Creatures controlled by players who chose peace get plus O, oh, plus three. So this is a super fun commander card, especially multiplayer commander, which I don't play very much. I tend to play 1v1. Um, but in a, a, a large multiplayer game, this is going to change everything. You're going to get the aggro players going for war and the defensive players going for peace. And uh, it's going to change a lot of stuff. Now, of course, that ability goes away if Archangel of Strife dies. It's not a permanent ability. It's just as long as she's uh, uh, on the battlefield. So she'll be a target potentially for those who want to deny the other people the, uh, the benefit. But a super fun commander card probably won't find a home in my cube just again because of the casting cost a lot of these angels are going to be at the high end of white and they need to be incredible for me to uh, fit them in unless I expand my cube I probably will expand my cube at some point to uh, uh, fit two full draft pods so I think that's 720 cards I'm getting close to that already um, but if that's the case then I could see uh, a lot of these angels making it in Next up, we've got a much more recent angel, Aurelia the War Leader from Gate Crash originally. She is two red, red, white, white for a legendary creature angel. She has flying, she has vigilance, she has haste, she's a 3-4. And whenever she attacks for the first time each turn, on tap all your creatures, and then after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. So you get to attack with everything. Then you get to attack with everything again. She's not a huge angel. She's a 3-4, which seems pretty undercosted. But the Vigilance, the Haste, and the double combat step makes her really, 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 really good. Um, yeah, Aurelia the War Leader. Uh, decent commander. Uh, very commander playable in a deck. And uh, 
I think she might make the cube. Um, Red-white is an interesting combination. Cube usually wants to be very aggressive, um, but this would be just an incredible curve topper if you're in any way mid-rangey or anything. Finally, we've got a very iconic angel. Not the most iconic, but a very iconic one. Bane Slayer Angel. Three white-white. Five drop. Going in the cube for sure. Five drop. Five five. Flying. First strike. Lifelink. Protection from demons and from dragons. Wow. Um, yeah. This is uh, kind of the definition of a pushed card. 5-5 five, five, Flying First Strike Lifelink for 5 is brokenly good. This card was considered brokenly good for the longest time. It got kind of supplanted by things like the Titans, especially Primeval Titan, but uh, Baneslayer was just incredible and still is. This is arguably the card I want to see when I play Momir Vig and I tap out for a 5-drop. Uh, definitely going in the cube. And then I'll have to keep an eye on it because it could just be too powerful for cube. Uh, but Baneslayer Angel, super iconic, but not the most iconic angel in this set. On to the last pack. On to the last pack. We've got an expensive angel on top. We've got Iona. Can't remember her cost at the moment. She's from... I can't remember offhand. I want to say she's from Zendikar Block but I don't know if that's right. But we've got Iona, Shield of Ameria. Yeah, Ameria. Ameria is uh, the goddess on Zendikar who is actually the memory of Emrakul. Um, interesting lore there. Uh, but uh, Iona is a six white, white, white for a legendary creature angel. She's a seven, seven flyer. And as Iona, Shield of Ameria enters the battlefield, choose a color. Your opponents can't cast spells of the chosen color. Vicious card. Vicious, vicious, vicious card. Especially if you can cheat it out anyway, if you can reanimate this, if you can get this out in any way early. You can shut down potentially half your opponent's deck. And if they're a monocolored deck, you can just shut down their entire deck. Uh, plus, she's a 7 7 flyer. And that's pretty darn good as well. She's going to make it into my cube um, to support reanimator, to support uh, uh, just getting stuff out early. And if somebody hard casts it, Good for them. Um, but I own a Shield of Amaria. Possibly one of the most expensive cards in this set. And now for a disappointment. People were very disappointed by this because I believe it's an uncommon. Maybe at one point it was a rare, but I believe it's an uncommon. Lightning Angel. One Jeskai. So one red, white, blue. For a 3-4 Flying Vigilance Haste. Totally efficiently costed. You know, this is totally fine. 3-4 Flying Vigilance Haste for 4 mana is pretty good. It's 3 different colors of mana, which kind of hurts. Uh, that's going to probably immediately just make it not playable in my cube. I really don't want to go into a 3-color format for my cube. Um, but yeah, this doesn't see play anywhere. Um, Commander, it's even sort of filler level. Uh, this is the disappointment card of the set, basically. Next up, we've got Platinum Angel. This sees modern play in a, a Mono Blue Tron, which I actually play. I have that deck. Um, I don't play modern too much, but I do have it. Uh, also, probably will see play in my cube. Um, it's a fun effect, and it's also something I like to see on turn 7 in Momir Vig, of course, and Commander playable. It's a 7-drop for a 4-4. That sounds bad. It has flying. That still sounds bad. But you can't lose the game, and your opponents can't win the game. As long as this creature's out, you are not losing the game. And your opponent's not winning. That's fantastic. That buys you so much time until they can find a way to kill this. It also spawned a hilarious uh, humor story. Uh, look up Platinum Angel Can't Lose Story, and you will find uh, a hilarious read. Uh, I definitely recommend it. Let's push this one to the back for a second. <laughs> uh, we've got Terriel, Reckoner of Souls. That was the poster, and I actually got the name right, so I'm proud of that. Uh, four, white, black, red for a legendary creature angel. It's a four, seven. Flying Vigilance, you can tap it and choose a creature card at random from target opponent's graveyard. Put that card onto the battlefield under your control. So it's reanimator of your opponent's creatures at random, which is fine. 
totally fine. Uh, in Commander, this is just super playable. I believe it's actually only ever been printed in Commander, so this didn't exist as a foil. Um, it was in the uh, the Angel Demons Dragons deck. The uh, Heavenly Inferno is what it was called. And I can't think of her name, the Commander. Um, she attacks and she brings out an angel or a demon or a, a dragon for free from your hand. Uh, this guy was an alternative commander. Kalia, Kalia of the Vast. This guy was an alternative commander in that deck. Really good. Super commander playable. Won't fit into my cube, unfortunately. Too expensive. Triple color casting cost. Um, but super, super, super commander playable. Uh, yeah, this is a fantastic card. And it's the first time it's ever been foiled. So that's pretty cool. And now the last card, the single most iconic angel ever printed, Sarah Angel, all the way back from Alpha. Uh, people collect Sarah Angel. People collect every single copy of the card, every single version of the card that exists, and this one's a bit special. It's a three white white for a four four flying vigilance. It's an uncommon card. It's never been printed at anything other than uncommon. And it's a limited bomb. Just super good and limited. This one's special because this art here, this Therese Nelson art. Therese Nelson, people collect Therese Nelson art. She's an incredible artist. This art has only ever been printed on uh, an oversized Sarah Angel card. I think it's, uh, uh, it might be like seven inches by nine inches. It's a large card. You know, it, it would cover up my Mana Leak symbol here. It was never printed on a playable, regular magic-sized card until right now. So this card, this uncommon, this technically unplayable card outside of Limited is probably going to be the most expensive card in this set, or at least one of the most expensive, just because people collect the heck out of Sarah Angel, people collect the heck out of Therese Nelson, and this art has never existed on a playable card. Very happy to see that. Totally going to go in my cube. Um, yeah, just super iconic card. But that is from the Vault Angels. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I don't do too many unboxing videos of sealed product because it's the same as everything. But I know I know people love seeing things unboxed and seeing what's inside of them. Uh, but that was from the Vault Angels. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I will do a from the Vault every year as long as I can get my hands on a copy. It's not always guaranteed that I can. Uh, luckily I did get this one for MSRP. I didn't pay the uh, the inflated price. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Manaleek. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. And you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Manaleek. You've already found me here on YouTube. You've got the comment section down below. Make use of that. I love seeing you guys interact with each other down there. Interact with me as well. Let me know. Did you get a copy of From the Vault? Are you happy with From the Vault Angels? Are you disappointed? Are there any angels that you wished had been in here that hadn't have been? What should have been in here instead of your Desert Angel? Let me know uh, in the comments below. Uh, as well, if you like the videos, you can click those little thumbs up icons. That lets me know that you like the videos. That lets the world know that you like the videos and keeps my videos rising up through the ranks. Finally, if you haven't subscribed, you should. There's a button below each video. There's one in the outro of each video, and that'll keep you posted on all the latest crack -a pack Tuesdays, Wacky Wednesdays, Spiky Saturdays, and any other random videos like unboxings. Finally, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you all next time.